In today's deep dive, we're uncovering the profound mysteries hidden in Wano country, focusing especially on Mount Fuji's secrets and the concealed location of a road poneglyph. Mount Fuji and Wano isn't just any mountain. It might actually be a gateway to Skypea. Digging into Wano's history hints that a road poneglyph could be hidden right there in Mount Fuji. The movements of the Roger Pirates and the ancient legends of Wano shed new light on these mysteries. If you agree with these theories, please hit like and subscribe. Got a different theory? Share it in the comments. Beware, this video contains spoilers up to episode 1067. Let's get right to it. First up, let's unravel the mystery of Mount Fuji's role. Throughout the Wano Country arc, we've constantly seen this mountain, but its true purpose remains unclear. What secrets could Mount Fuji be hiding? Interestingly, there's a theory that Mount Fuji could be a pathway to Skypea. This hinges on something Hawkins mentioned. The sea stone born in Wano Country could be the key. Remember the clouds in Skypea, similar in composition, that you could stand or grab onto? It's thanks to a substance called pyrobloin. This substance is transported by volcanoes, so if Wano's sea stone shares components with Skypea, it implies they're connected through Wano's volcanoes. And with Mount Fuji towering high, touching the sky, it seems like the only place reaching Skypea. It makes you think that not only pyrobloin, but also ordinary people might reach Skypea if they try hard enough. Whether it's the top of High West is still a question. Ganfall mentioned that High West's peak is the usual way to Skypea. Given that it's very difficult to reach Wano, if High West's peak is there, it suggests only the strong can reach Skypea. This means that if Wano's Mount Fuji is the spire of High West, it cannot explain how the bite dog that was beaten before Nami's eyes was able to get to Skypea. Given that, we expect there to be more than one separate location for the High West Summit. It's just one of the many theories, but it's definitely possible. We might soon learn more about Mount Fuji, and I can't wait to see its mysteries unfold. Now, let's move on to the next mystery. Next up, let's delve into the mystery of the road poneglyph's location in Wano country. Currently, we know of two poneglyphs in Wano. Brooke found one in the basement of Orochi's castle, and Trafalgar Law discovered the other on Onokshima. However, the elusive red road poneglyph, a key place in Wano's storyline, is still unfound. So where could it be? Could the red road poneglyph be located in Mount Fuji? Initially, I thought it might be on Onagshima, but it's unlikely that Roger ever visited there. Odin returned to Wano 26 years ago, but Kaido had already occupied Onagshima two years prior. Even if Roger didn't encounter Kaido, a visit to Onagshima would inevitably lead to a clash with the Beast Pirates. If Roger had met Kaido, it would have led to a massive war. Even if he was dealing with the Beast Pirates, quick copying of the Poneglyph on Onagshima seems improbable, so I think it's not there. Moreover, the narration about quickly copying the Poneglyph and setting sail again was shown against the backdrop of Kurai. This suggests a high possibility of the road poneglyph being on Wano's mainland. These options are either finding the poneglyph in Kurai after dropping off Taki and then departing, or dropping off Taki in Kurai, going to a port where the road poneglyph is, copying it, and then setting sail again from Kurai's port. I lean towards the possibility that it was on the mainland, but why Mount Fuji? It's because Roger met with Hayagoro, the boss of the underworld in the flower capital. Hayagoro, a major figure who ran the underworld of the flower capital, was most likely in the city. This narrows down the potential locations to either the castle or Mount Fuji. Why not the castle? Because Roger didn't meet Orokai. When Odin returned 26 years ago, Orokai was already the shogun, and Sukiyaki had passed away. Odin learned about this only after visiting Laughtail, so it's more likely that Roger didn't go to the castle. It's plausible that Odin dropped off Taki, went to Mount Fuji to copy the poneglyph, and then departed amid a commotion. This is one of the many theories not confirmed yet. If Mount Fuji indeed has a connection to Skypea and also houses the road poneglyph, it becomes an incredibly significant location. Now, let's explore the mystery of why Wano Country was once called the Golden Country. This was revealed through the words of Gyokumaru. 
The mystery emerged in a dialogue about Ryuma, indicating what kind of man he was. In ancient times, Ryuma protected Wano, known then for its gold, from pirates. If Yukimaru's account holds true, it implies that there was gold in Wano during Ryuma's era. But why doesn't modern Wano have this gold, and what's its connection to Jaya? There are several commonalities ancient text on the giant Golden Bell and Jaya, and both being referred to as Golden Cities. So, did the gold from Wano end up in Jaya? Unlikely, if we believe Gyukumaru, Ryuma lived around 400 years ago, which coincides with Jaya being flung into the sky. If Jaya was known as a golden city at that time like Wano, the theory of gold being transported from Wano weakens. So why is there no gold in Wano now? This is more of a logical guess than a theory. The gold was either plundered after Ryuma's era or hidden because it couldn't be protected. Wano is currently riddled with impoverished towns, but imagine a storyline where the hidden gold is used to restore Wano's former glory. However, this hinges on the possibility that gold still lies uncovered in Wano. Moving on to another mystery of Wano country, the reason behind Kaido's prolonged stay there. Kaido once told Yamato that he stayed in Wano specifically because it was Wano. This implies a definitive reason for his choice. So what was Kaido's objective in Wano? Let's discuss three theories. The first theory relates to the previous mystery about Wano being a golden country. Kaido might have believed in the existence of gold in Wano and stayed for its wealth. Additionally, Wano is rich in resources. The presence of liquor iron ore discovered by Koala and mentioned in Dressrosa as mineral contained in weapons likely to be exported suggests a special mineral found in limited countries. A country called Golden would likely be abundant in weapons, too. Kaido could have stayed in Wano for its potential riches, fame, and power. The second theory is that Kaido was waiting for Joy Boy. Kaido, in his search for a place to die, mentioned to Luffy that he couldn't become Joy Boy, indicating this as a possibility. However, this theory stumbles over the fact that Wano wasn't open to the world. Ironically, Luffy did enter the country and became akin to Joy Boy. If Kaido truly awaited Joy Boy, Wano would have been opened. His failure to do so suggests a different true motive. The third theory posits that Kaido believed an ancient weapon was in Wano. While its existence there is unconfirmed, Kaido, who desires a world of violence, could create such a world with an ancient weapon. He might have thought Wano housed this weapon and aimed to build his ideal world. This theory stems from Crocodile's experience. He knew about Pluton despite being unable to read Poneglyphs. Similarly, Kaido might have known about the ancient weapon's existence without knowing its location. However, this raises the question of why not choose Alabasta, which could have been equally suitable. So, the first theory about Wano's rich resources and the potential for wealth, fame, and power seems more plausible. Next, we delve into the enigma of Wano Country, a closed-off nation for over 800 years, yet teeming with devil fruits. Characters like Kinemon, Reizo, Tama, and even the little Bunkichi have consumed devil fruits. It's quite surprising to see such a variety in a secluded country. It seems normal for members of the Beast Pirates and their affiliates to eat them, but also include samurais and animals. So why are there so many devil fruits in Wano? One straightforward theory is a trade deal between Wano and the world government, resulting in an influx of devil fruits. However, this theory has its flaws. If Kaido, who amassed devil fruits and manufactured smiles, received them through world government trade, it seems unlikely he would allow the likes of Kinemon to consume them. Considering the high value of devil fruits at around 100 million, selling them rather than allowing samurai to eat them seems more plausible. This leads to another theory. Wano might be the origin of devil fruits, or perhaps there's a tree in Wano that produces them. Wano is known for containing a special component, pyrobloin, found in sea stone. This component, responsible for creating island clouds, is thought to accelerate the growth of flora and fauna, evident in the enormous creatures of Skypea. Whether pyrobloin contributes to the growth remains unclear, but it's a possibility. And if a plant absorbs such ingredients, it is likely to bear devil fruits as well. 
However, iguana is abundant in devil fruits, Skypea should be too, making this theory less credible. Considering all this, the mystery remains unsolved. It might be just a miraculous coincidence that Wano has a plethora of devil fruits. The connection between Wano and these fruits is still unclear, and uncovering this secret would be exciting. Moving on to another mystery, Zunesha. Its very existence is a riddle, and the fact that it's been condemned to only walk for ages adds to the intrigue. What crime did Zunesha commit? I believe it's related to Joy Boy from 800 years ago. Joy Boy, as hinted, failed to fulfill a promise to a mermaid princess. Manasuke's words suggest that Zunesha was a comrade of Joy Boy and committed a crime 800 years ago. Given their shared history and camaraderie, it's plausible they were involved in the same misdeed. But why is Zunesha restricted to only walking? This seems to be an order from the Kazuki clan of that era, possibly to protect the Mink tribe. A key hint here is that Mamanosuke's words hinting Zunesha to perform actions beyond walking. If someone other than the Kazuki clan had commanded it to walk, Mamanosuke's words wouldn't have enabled any additional actions. Thus, it implies that walking is a directive from the Kazuki clan. From the interconnections among the Kazuki clan, the Mink tribe, Joy Boy, and Zunesha, we can infer that these four forces were allies. However, with Joy Boy's defeat 800 years ago and awaiting the next Joy Boy, Zunesha has continued to walk, perhaps to prevent the Mink tribe from facing extinction. The reasons behind Zunesha's longevity and its true nature remain shrouded in mystery. Next, let's delve into the mystery surrounding Joy Boy. Originally existing 800 years ago, Joy Boy is likely not a person's name, but a title. This is inferred from Odin's words awaiting for Joy Boy's appearance and Zunisha's statement about Joy Boy's return. If it's a title, it would be linked to someone who awakened the powers of the human human fruit model Nika. The title might refer to the person who first awakened Nika's powers, or perhaps someone who awakened these powers and then came to be known as Joy Boy. Among these possibilities, the former seems more likely. I also believe that Joy Boy is part of the D clan. From Odin's words during his execution and upon returning to Wano, it's evident that he was waiting for Joy Boy. Yamato mentions that the man Odin waited for is Luffy, primarily because of the D in his name. Considering these factors, it appears that the D clan possesses the qualities to become Joy Boy. Does this mean that only the D clan can awaken Nika's powers? While many mysteries remain, one theory is that the will of Devil Fruits may play a part in this. There are still numerous unknowns about Joy Boy, including how it was known that he would appear 800 years later and his connection to the Straw Hat. If there is a relation between Joy Boy and the Straw Hat, the child featured in Volume 31 might also play a significant role. With this, we conclude our discussion on the mysteries of Wano Country. Each mystery seems on the cusp of revelation, adding to the excitement. And that's all for today. This channel posts summaries and explanations and ranking videos related to One Piece. If you like One Piece, we'd be happy if you could support us by subscribing to our channel and commenting. Thank you for watching to the end, and we'll see you in the next video.